You are listening to the Praise Works Health and Wellness Network. Our broadcast host will take you on a journey of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. All the content aired on this network have been copywritten and are protected by federal copyright laws. All duplications and our rebroadcast of any show on this network must have the expressed written permission of the network owners. The claims and views presented on this network are not necessarily the view and opinions of the network owners. Take a moment every day to look in the mirror and smile, for do you not know that your body houses the Holy Spirit who is in you, a gift from God? You are not your own and have been purchased by God, so honor him with your body as you take a journey of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to the Wellness Journey with Linus of Praise Works. Our program will show you the fun and simplicity of wellness. You can achieve total wellness through holistic practices and fitness. Join us now as we talk to the experts in the field of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Here's Linus. Hi, this is Linus of PraiseWorks, and welcome to a really special edition of The Wellness Journey. I am so excited about the guest that we have uh, with us today. Uh, she is an award-winning author and a best-selling author, and we're going to get to her in just a moment. I know you're going to love what she has to say, but I wanted to tell you real quickly some of the exciting things that are going on with PraiseWorks this month. For those of us, and I'm saying us because I'm including me, for those of us that would like to have uh, maybe a little bit of a better body uh, for the summer, Praise Works is running a viral challenge. It is Mean Abs June. If you want your abs to be lean and mean, we're going to be working together. Right now on Facebook alone, we have signed up over 55 people in less than a day that are going to be doing this challenge, and it's all free. If you want to know more about it, go to my fan page, and that is facebook.com slash praiseworkshealthwellness. That's praiseworkshealthwellness. Go to my fan page and sign up and say, yes, I'm going to take the challenge, and I will be demonstrating the uh, different exercises that we're going to be doing uh, to get ourselves lean and mean for uh, the uh, summer, and also we're also doing another challenge, and that is for everybody to eat a salad every day. So we'll be posting salad recipes for everyone to try. Now, if I can do it, you can do it. Come on, let's go. Let's get our energy going, our energy flowing, and get on that journey to total wellness for the mind, body, and spirit. To find out more about the Mean Ab Challenge for June, make sure you go to my fan page. That's Facebook.com slash Praise Works Health Wellness. I know you'll love it. And for those of you who might hear this broadcast in December, oh, well, you missed it. We're probably going to be running something in December. So whatever time you hear this, always go to my fan page. You'll find out exactly what's going on uh, with Praise Works. And, of course, my website, that's praiseworks.biz. Praiseworks, all one word, dot biz. Okay, when we get back from the break, I have a great guest. I have loved talking with her. She has such energy, and she's going to tell you her story about how she got off an addiction. Now, most people think addiction right away. You think of maybe alcohol, cigarettes, maybe drugs. No. This is just as bad as an addiction as that. It's something that the majority of us in America suffer from. So, when we get back in the break, we'll find out what is it that we're all suffering from that we can be delivered from, and the person we're going to talk to next, she can do it. This is Linus from Praise Works, and we'll be right back. Are you suffering from neck and back pain, joint pain, complications from PMS, stomach problems and headaches? Do you feel tense and stressed? Forever Green Essential Oils is the answer for you. Essential oils are Source from herbs, spices, seeds, flowers, and plants. Essential oils have proven their medicinal and healing qualities for hundreds of years. In the Bible, essential oils are referenced many times and were used for healing purposes. For Evergreen Essential Oils produces one of the most pristine, organic, and therapeutic oils in the world. 
There are an array of oils that will address many of the health problems that you might currently be taking pharmaceuticals for. To find out more about these wonderful essential oils and how they can help you, contact us for more information at oilsessential at ymail.com. That's O-I-L-S-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L at ymail.com. Or give us a call at 916-706-7565 and we will be glad to give you a free assessment on how Forever Green Essential Oils can aid you along your journey to total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Forever Green Essential Oils, one of the best organic and therapeutic great oils in the world. Hi, this is Linus of PraiseWorks, and if you're just joining us, we have a fantastic guest with us. I'm very pleased to um, have um, on our show today Connie Bennett. She is the author of Sugar Shock, which is a bestseller, which talked about basically our addiction to sugar, and now she has written a new book that is rolling out today. It's available today, June 5th. It's Beyond Sugar Shock. And Connie Bennett uh, is very charismatic, former sugar addict, and author of the best-selling book, um, Sugar Shock, which is her first book, which was really praised by Dr. Mohammed, and now her newest book, Beyond Sugar Shock, which will be released um, actually June 5th, which is, which is when you're listening to this broadcast, by Hay House. And the subtitle tells you basically how it's helped. It's called The Six-Week Plan to Break Free of Your Sugar Addiction and to Get Slimmer, sexier, and sweeter. Actually, Connie quit sugar on a doctor's orders herself in 1998, and she now is known as the Sugar Freedom Coach. She is dedicated to helping sugar addicts worldwide and runs her popular Sugar Freedom Now course, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. Connie, are you there? I am here. Linus, thank you so, so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Well, it's fantastic. You know, a lot of people are going to say, okay, you really haven't had sugar since 1998? Actually, I have slipped. Not a lot. (laughs) uh, A handful of times at the beginning. And Mm -hmm. I'm very, very upfront about that. In fact, um, I don't see it as a failure. I see the fact that I slipped helped me to get back on track very quickly. Now, it was I mean, it was really very, very few times. So, yeah, I have been off sugar since 1998, other than, you know, maybe a handful of times of slipping. Wow, that is fantastic, and I, I understand that there's a lot of triggers and things that happen along this journey of trying to get sugar out of our lives. Yeah, I wish and I, I want to say, say that one thing to your listeners, do. because I think this yes. is a very, very important thing for people to know. When I quit back in 1998, I did not want to quit at all, at all. In fact, I, I jokingly call call myself a reluctant sugar kicker. And not only that, I mean, <laughs> I say I absolutely did not, did not, did not want to quit. And the reason that I make that point now is that in coaching people, and I've now been helping people since, uh, so I quit sugar in 1998, I've been helping people since about 2002, is that I hear this time and time again from clients, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, it tastes so good. And I totally can understand that. And so that is where I meet people. I meet people I assume, you know, it it does taste good. Now, having said Mm -hmm. that, I've been off sugar for so long now, it would not taste good at all to me. Mm. But it took me a while. Definitely took me a while. So I just want to encourage whoever's listening and they're like, oh, my Mm -hmm. God, I can't do that. No, you can. You can. But here's the thing. I don't tell you to do it right away. So, for instance, in my new book, Beyond Sugar Shock, um, I give you three weeks we're going to prepare for three weeks before you even actually quit. So it's not like you go buy the book and you've got to quit sugar tomorrow. No, 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 no. Ah, you okay. take time to do it. And I sort of got that idea because I flopped for about three weeks. <laughs> Back in mm. Would it be okay to tell my story? 
Absolutely. In fact, I was going to ask you if you could please share with us your story. And also, uh, for those of us who don't know, I know because I was lucky enough to read the book, but what is Sugar Shock? Ah. I think some people are listening may not even know what that is. What is Sugar <laughs> Shock and what is your story? Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, well, let me begin first by telling my story and then kind of how I arrived at the whole uh, concept of Sugar Shock, if that's okay. Great. So, uh, as I mentioned, I was 1998, and I was hooked on red licorice and chocolate-covered peanuts, whose brand name we won't mention. Uh, <laughs> I never mention brand names of foods that I <laughs> demonize. Um, and uh, these, like, thin little chocolate chips. And, so I, and, and oh, and these thin little um, wheat wafers. When I say sugar, I also mean, uh, for the most part, refined carbs. Anyhow, I was really badly hooked. I had sugar cravings all the time. I did some really crazy things like uh, like I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I would drive clear across town, didn't matter if it was in rush hour, to go to a particular candy store to buy these very special uh, candies that were low calorie, okay? I mean, give mm. me a break. Who was <laughs> I fooling? These were low calorie candies that were loaded with sugar. I've since researched Ooh. it, and they were loaded with high fructose corn syrup. So I went, uh-huh. and, but they were low calorie, and I'd consume, you know, 30 of them in a sitting. So Ooh. I was monitoring my calories, and I was never, like, hugely overweight. But I was eating, like, just complete junk food. So anyhow, at the same time that I was hooked on all the sugar, I also was besieged by 44 ailments. I was t- very, very tired a lot of the time. I found it very difficult to concentrate. Um, every time a month, I had the most severe PMS. It was just, it was awful. Mm. Um, and, you know, people, oh my goodness, beware of Connie, it's that time of month. Uh, <laughs> people who knew me would um, kind of either keep me at an arm's length at certain times they didn't know um, <laughs> for both books, for both Sugar Shock and for Beyond Sugar Shock. I had editors, editors who were like, "Oh, tell the listener, tell the readers your story." So I did, but what I had to do to tell the story was I literally had to call people who knew me. Mm. Basically, I was giving them license to just blast away and tell me how bad I was. <laughs> I mean, I called, I called. A girl, a girl, girlfriends, uh, one of whom had dumped me, and I write about her um, it, for in Beyond Sugar Shock. For Sugar Shock, Sugar Shock tells a story about my an ex boyfriend who dumped me because I would so I would eat basically I would eat a lot of sugar so I'd eat like a whole I'd sit in the parking lot, but on my mm-hmm. way to my boyfriend's house and I have I don't know maybe six eight pieces of red licorice okay. And then, sure enough, about an hour later, I'm picking a fight with him. Anyhow, he, mm. I ultimately was quite moody and irrational and difficult to deal with, and so he ultimately dumped me. He thought I, there was a personality you know, defect. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, who is this chick, Connie? And later, it took me a while, but I figured it all out and finally pieced everything together. Anyhow, long story short, so I had all these crazy symptoms. In Sugar Shock, I outlined all 44 of them, which was, kind of wild, tell the story about the boyfriend, and then beyond sugar shock, I had to tell more stories. So I'm sitting there writing the book and crying as I'm remembering Mm. all this stuff. And at the same time, I was like, oh, my God. I mean, it's been 14 years since I quit sugar. At the time, it was maybe 13. Like, how can I still be upset? And so Mm. I then had to use tools that I actually teach you in beyond sugar shock to deal with these emotional vestiges. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like years Well, you ago. know, they talk about that. As they say, physician, heal thyself. Many times when we write books like these or when people write books like these that are helping others, a lot of times we end up helping ourselves in the process. The, the authors end up helping themselves in the process. So, wow, what a, um, what a real uh, way to kind of go through stuff. And, and, you know, you're talking about your emotions and things like that. Is that what sugar shock involves? Um, well, so... Um, so it impacts your emotions? Well, what 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 you do, so let me get back. Yeah, you asked me a definition of sugar shock, so let me give it to you. So basically, it's, a very, it's an easily avoidable 
health-harming, mood-damaging, confusion-creating constellation of symptoms that affects millions of people worldwide. I dare say most of your listeners are probably putting themselves into sugar shock often, possibly several Mm. times a day, just by over-consuming sugar and other processed nutrient-deprived sweet foods. On average, the average person, at least in the U.S., overdoses on on sugar about 150 pounds a year. That's if you go by the USDA calculations, but um, insider figures uh, give much higher figures. So you could Mm -hmm. be consuming as high as 228 pounds of sweeteners. Now, when I say sugar, I mean sweeteners, you know. We're talking about high fructose mm-hmm. corn syrup, crystalline fructose, inulin, corn syrup solids, maltodextrin, beet sugar, cane sugar, etc. And then in addition to that, you also may be unknowingly consuming another nearly 200 pounds of sugars. I call them their culpable cousins. And these are white flour products such as white bread, white ah. rice, sweetened cereals. Mm-hmm. So basically, you're, you're putting your poor body... In, in in a constant abuse, I call it sort of a sugar shock roulette. The bottom right. line is that when you're constantly putting yourself into sugar shock, you're triggering elevated blood sugar levels, then that overstimulates insulin release, that causes excessive inflammation, and that could pave the way for nearly 150 mostly preventable conditions or diseases, and that includes obesity, type 2 diabetes, blood sugar disorders, heart disease, cancer, and even Alzheimer's disease. So, And if you're in sugar shock, we talked about some of the symptoms I was going through, you also could mm-hmm. be suffering from things like headache and fatigue and depression, anxiety, irritability, and you know, um, difficulty, uh, a severe PMS, or difficulty with your loved ones. Wow, bottom that's line, amazing. Bottom line, sugar shock can send you speeding toward obesity, disease, and an early death. Well, you know, that's amazing because I know that here in the United States, we are at our most unhealthiest right now. Uh, Obesity is up, uh, chronic disease is up, uh, diseases and illnesses related to obesity is up, cancer is up, and many things have have been tied to our diet and our lack of exercise, not just our genetics. And when it comes to sugar, a lot of people ask, is sugar, is sugar really toxic? And if it is toxic, you just got to be saying the reasons why. But how do you teach people to arrive at a place you call beyond sugar, ch- uh, sugar shock? How does that happen? Uh, first part of your uh, question is, yes, sugar is toxic. And I'm really thrilled that 60 Minutes ran that recent piece, that people are now beginning to realize that sugar is toxic. One of my pet peeves is that most people only think about sugar in terms of their weight. Mm -hmm. I won't say who it was, but I just read an article yesterday. It was actually an op-ed piece from a health expert who made the point that um, she was uh, eating junk food and, and the focus was on weight. No, 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 no. Weight is one of many, many problems that you can get from eating too many sweets and refined carbs. Mm-hmm. Well, you just outlined some of them. You just outlined them. So, yes, it is. So having, having said that then, basically um, you want to be able to, what I say, get beyond sugar shock. And so by beyond sugar shock, I mean that I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my book cover and I'm going, oh, those are kind of those are uh, pretty cupcakes uh, on the cover of my book. Um, now, I, have, <laughs> I got a little bit of flack for the cupcakes on the cover because uh, uh, there are cupcakes on the cover of my book. But I do want to assure people, you know what? I'm looking at them, and I just think they're pretty. I'm not tempted. Um, the, the cupcakes are not calling out to me. I just think they're real pretty colors. Mm. So I look at it. You know, I don't want to say work of art because they're really not works of art, but they they are kind of cute, mm-hmm. and that is that is what I seek to do. The, to help people to go beyond sugar shock, so that they can very they can step outside of themselves and not be tempted in the way that you know they they used to be tempted. 
Well, but when it comes to temptation and just releasing that whole need for sugar, uh, what are the benefits of releasing the sugar? A lot of people think, well, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad for me. And then they rationalize uh, the fact that, okay, you just said that it is bad for you. But what are really the benefits of releasing sugar? How did you start feeling initially once you began that journey of getting rid of the sugar? All right. Well, first off, the ben- uh, let me address the first part of your question uh, first. Benefits, many, 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 many. So, and that is what, for in the first part of the uh, Beyond Sugar Shock, the book, and also in my companion course, which is um, Sugar Freedom Now course, we focus on benefits because we've already established, you know, people don't want to quit sugar. So you have to have something else that you want even more. What do you really, really want? So if you quit sugar, or at least cut back, I'm not telling everybody to quit. You could get more energy. You could feel more focused. You could have better relationships. My PMS went away by, I don't know, about 95%. Wow. I mean, I remember about three months after I quit sugar, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I forgot about that. It was that time of month, and I was totally taken by surprise because the symptoms had so diminished. Uh, Concentrate better. I never in a million years could have written a book, you know, when in my sugar sugar addicted days. I now kind of playfully, my background's as a journalist, and I was was a sugar addicted journalist. Um, And what else? Uh, You you just, you feel better, you're happier. One of the biggest benefits that my coaching clients tell me is that they get this... uh, overpowering feeling of freedom. That's wow. like this exhilarating feeling. And, and they're not trapped in that kind of crazy obsessiveness where they've got to have it. I mean, I told you earlier how I would drive across town to get these stupid mm-hmm. candies. That was major, mm-hmm. major obsession. Mm-hmm. And when you, yes, have, when you reach that place of sugar freedom... Or what I, or you know, or what I call beyond sugar shock, you're not trapped in that way. You are no longer what I call a sugar slave. You're not. You're free. <laughs> I was going to say you you are free, and you're no longer uh, having sugar control your life, basically, because yes. it can control your life. Yes. Uh, these obsessions and these addictions can can control your life. You're kind of flipping the script, and now you're in charge, which is yes. as it should be. Now, when we take a look at uh, the FAD diet. Would you tell us about FAD and what that is in case our listeners don't know what it is? I think it's an interesting acronym. Okay. And also uh, tell us about why that is a problem when it comes to sugar. Okay, sure. So um, SAD is a phrase that's been in use, and it stands for Standard American Diet. However, for those of your listeners who are in other countries, I was like, you know, really, SAD is not just for American. So I came up with another acronym for SAD. I think I, I think I call it like the standard abuse diet. Um, right. <laughs> so seriously, SAD and SAD will make you very sad. Um, mm-hmm. I.e., you know, you're eating junk food, and but that's what most Americans and most people around the world are eating. Roughly, I don't know, maybe a, at least a third of their diet is junk food. That's ridiculous. Our poor bodies need like good quality, as you know, as you, so uh, you know, as you tell your fans, we need quality food to fuel us. Yes. And sad Mm -hmm. is a lot. A lot of sad is, you know, comprised of of these unhealthy carbs. I call them culprit carbs, which lead to sugar shock. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I, I, something else I wanted to ask you, because I still have some sugar in my diet, but I've cut down significantly. Um, I haven't used table sugar in years. I guess what's left are uh, the crackers, because um, I've got, I do have this one addiction that I did finally get rid of about four years ago. I put down the cheese it I'll say the brand name. Everybody knows what those things are, those little uh, orange crackers filled with all kinds of sodium and processed stuff. I, I don't even know exactly what's in it. But it, whatever's in it was addictive, and I would fall asleep eating that. But, you know, as I, once I decided, once I made up my mind that I was going to 
put down the cheese it. Uh, that was the first step. But the other things that happened along the way were kind of funny in terms of trying to struggle to uh, to get out of it. So share with uh, uh, folks, you know, some of the things that sugar addicts might go through, what you call the five stages of, of sugar bondage. Uh, what do you mean? What, what's that about? Because I certainly had uh, Cheez-It bondage. Ah, yeah. Uh, well, I want to go back to your Cheez-It. Uh, I will talk yeah. about the bondage, but I think you raise a very, very good point. Each of us seems to have certain trigger foods. Uh-huh. So, for instance, even though it's brown rice, I have to watch it with brown rice cakes. Mm. I mean, I was off sugar, Mm -hmm. and I was still having this brown rice cake struggle. So not a good idea for me to keep, and, you know, and they're they're much higher quality than, you know, than the junk I used to eat, but not a good Mm -hmm. idea for me to keep a whole package of them in the house. Likewise, um, dried um, a mango. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So yeah. good. Not a good mm-hmm. idea for me to keep the whole, all those dried mangoes in the house. Yeah. So each person, so for you it was Cheez-Its. Yeah. So each person has to figure out, and, and they may not even be sugar. It's some version of, generally it is some version of a culprit carb. And there are other chemicals in there, and the food scientists have you know, been brilliant at finding ways to you know, hook us so we want to go back for more and more and more and more. Ah, um, okay. So, but, so what it ultimately comes down to is you have to find out what, is, what, is, what are like the you know, two or three top foods that just call out to you. And they could be sugary foods, and they could be these culprit car foods. So for you, it was the Cheez-Its. For me, yes. even though they weren't, um, well, people, I, I even had a doctor saying, Connie, come on, you're fooling yourself. These are like these are like brown rice cake. They're rice cakes, for goodness sakes. They're like pro- speedily processed. And I'm like, but I'm off sugar, I'm off sugar. And it's like I sort of had to be, pro- you know, <laughs> I still had to have somebody pound me, well, not pound me, but, you know, I had to have somebody say, Connie, wake up, you know, and smell mm-hmm. the, I don't know what, the rose or whatever, um, because you're deceiving yourself. So, it's really important for people to find out what are, what's what are the foods that are your trigger foods. Now, for some people, they actually can have a little bit of those. At one point, I was toying with the idea I would have brown rice cakes. I'd have like maybe one at a time and make sure I had some protein or fat at the same time, you know. But I wouldn't keep them in the house. So you just have to. I what I do actually in in both Beyond Sugar Shock and and but more in my uh, Sugar Freedom Now course is that I help you to make peace with those trigger foods. And I I even have a whole uh, segment because trigger foods are such a big, big, big part of what happens with people. And uh, the other thing, you know, some people are triggered for, for really, you know, curious reasons. You can't do anything about it. For instance, like some people may want to have, you know, pancakes, just like they had as a kid. Right. And I mean, they are just, they cannot turn those pancakes down. Now, I was going through something, um, kind of a, a personal uh, family thing, and I was finding, and I moved recently, I was finding before I moved that I was craving uh, this uh, chicken soup, and you got it at Whole Foods, it's like mama's, mom's chicken soup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this is kind of interesting. Cause I'm like, you know, what do I want? I want, like, mother's love or whatever, <laughs> you know. So mm-hmm, you, you mm-hmm. really can learn a lot from trigger foods. And I totally forgot the first part of your question. is just that when you talked about Cheez-Its, it just really got me going, and I feel very, very strongly yeah. oh, well, about Yeah, well, that's fine because you, you definitely you, – that trigger foods are very important for people to understand because we are a nation of emotional eaters. Yep. And behind the results of the emotional eaters comes the obesity, the diseases, and all the other things that come with it because the kinds of things we eat as emotional eaters. I don't know. Maybe there's some emotional eaters out there that eat broccoli and have a lot of gas. I don't no, know. No, nobody eats broccoli. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> How many people eat broccoli for emotional eating? No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Most people eat emotional stuff that's not good stuff. But I, have but I will say I've come up with a really cool um, recipe um, for 
you know, for people who are into mashed potatoes, I've been experimenting to do like a um, a mashed um, um, broccoli. So I'm, still, I'm still experimenting with that. One of these days, I'll be doing a cookbook. Um, yeah, with, you know, I think that could work. Yeah, with a bunch of like substitutes. Anyhow. I totally okay, forgot but, the other part of your question. I'm that's so okay. <laughs> that's okay. Like what we do on the wellness journey, we just kind of uh, take the journey to wherever the conversation leads us. So you're fine. Um, I was asking about the uh, five stages of sugar bondage that you talk about in your book. Ah, what yes, are those yes, five, the stages? five stages? Okay. Okay. So um, most people around the world are actually hanging out in stage one, and they don't even realize that they're hanging out in stage one because that is you're inside, you're very, very sad, and you're seduced um, by all these fake foods out there. In fact, um, Mm -hmm. New York Times columnist and best-selling author Mark Bittman, he he talks about um, these food-like products. So we're talking about these processed, packaged, fake foods. So stage one, you're eating all the you're you're in sugar shock often, you're eating a lot of sugar, sugary foods. You may be, you may even be eating some of these artificially sweetened foods, which I'm not a fan of. Mm. And you may also be having a lot of a lot of fake carbs. So you are you are there's no way to go around it. You are malnourished. You could be slim by the way. There's okay, one thing that a lot of people right. don't realize. You could be a slim sugar addict or a slim carb addict. So that's stage one. You're trapped, but you probably don't even know it. And and you're probably in de- what I call sugar denial or <clears throat> sad misery. Stage two, you get this really scary or humiliating wake-up call. You're overweight. You break, I heard this from one client, you know, you break um, a seat somewhere. Like you're so overweight that w- some chair falls apart. Um, in my case... You, you know, my boyfriend dumped me. I had 44 elements, and I just felt awful. Stage two, humiliating mm. wake-up call. I mean, very, very humiliating. Um, and at that point, desperation or disease or despair or self-disgust drives you to seek, seek help. Mm. Now, what's interesting is, you know, despite the fact that it's a really rough place to be, that uh, scary t- stage two time can really give people the nudge that they need so they will stop hemming and hawing and, and that they can take action. I All would right, hope that a lot of your listeners are in this stage two, and I would hope they're in mm-hmm. stage three. Stage three, oh, my goodness, negativity reigns. Hmm. Um, but it's a good stage to be in. You alternate between anger and defiance and resistance and resentment and guilt and self-blame and self-pity and self-hate and self-criticism – and you're also in this, um, you also do what I call why me complaints. So basically you just, you're, you have just all these crazy conflicting feelings and your emotions, you know, can bounce around like a yo-yo. This can be, stage three can really be a rotten, dreadful place. Again, um, that's also a good place, to, you know, to be because even though it can be tough, it can really help you, um, help you to, to make a decision like enough already. Mm. As far I mentioned the why is me complaints or the why me complaints. Yes. So right. stage three is also people are like, oh my God, you know, why can't I just eat sugar like anybody else? It's just mm. not fair. I've heard that from clients again and again. By the way, that was me too. That was me. <laughs> so whenever I talk, when if I ever sound like I'm making fun of any sugar addicts, I'm not. I've been there. So mm-hmm. I'm talking about, you know, the way I used to be. And then, um, but stage three, so stage two and stage three are really, really valuable places, but they may be uncomfortable. And that is why I developed the Sugar Freedom Now course, Mm -hmm. which then led to this book, Beyond Sugar Shock, to help people to get out of those really tough stages. There's no question about it. They're tough stages. But they also could be incredibly valuable. Um, and by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but uh, Beyond Sugar Shock actually grew out of my Sugar Freedom Now course. So I quit sugar mm. in 1998, 2002. I started reaching out online. 
I, I, I gave my first version of the Sugar Freedom Now course. It was called something else at the time. I think it was only 21. It was a 21-day program, which has since evolved. And so I've been doing this for about a decade, different wow. of this course. Stage four. You know, uh, I, real quick, when it's stage three and, and, the, and, the, and the course and how that kind of helps you do stage three, you talk about that a little bit in your book about um, why would you need a health coach or why do you need a coach to uh, help you through this process. And I think the stage three right there answers the question. Um, you can easily get stuck at stage three, and one of the things that's very helpful with your course is that it helps move them out of stage three because they have a coach. They have someone they can commensurate with but they can still help them move forward to the next stage, which is stage four. What's that? Well, let, let me just say one thing, and I, please, I don't want your listeners to take me wrong. I do not mean to sound self-serving. But mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do with both my book, Beyond Sugar Shock, and with the companion Sugar Freedom Now course is to make it easier for you because for many people, quitting sugar can be difficult. What I'm also mm-hmm. trying to do is to give you the help that I did not get in 1998. Mm-hmm. It was a very, very lonely road for me to travel in 1998. Mm-hmm. Quickly, stage four, you feel unsecure, insecure, uncertain, self-doubting, nervous, scared, unsure, but you're kind of open-minded to these really cool you know, new possibilities. And um, I also give you, in, in both uh, Beyond Sugar Shock and also in the Sugar Freedom Now, of course, you get what I call adventure sizes, and those are adventurous exercises. So I just want to make the point that my goal is to make releasing sugar, and I don't use the word kicking anymore. I used to. My, phrase, my, phrase, mm-hmm. my terminology has changed. You're going to easily just kind of release it effortlessly because you're going to be in all these other cool things. Stage five, you're on your way. You're curious, mm. you're accepting, you're full of pride, you're determined, you're confident, you're, you're committed. I dare say that a lot of your listeners are not there yet and they're maybe not there on stage four either. Most of your you know, if 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 any of you out there do feel hooked on sugar or refined carbs, I dare say you're probably, you know, you're smart, so you realize now that you've been in stage one for many years, and you're probably in stage two or three, which is cool, which is cool. And so my goal then is to make it easy for you, because I know it can be and tough. You're going to be tempted no matter where you go. So my goal is just make it easier for you. And well, fun. you know, I'm, the thing I like about your book the most is that it's very user-friendly, and you have a lot of anecdotes of people who have been where you're at and who have, you know, been released, so to speak, have been freed from the addiction of sugar. And I think that in itself is very encouraging because everybody has a story to tell. But sometimes when we're going through that journey, like, for instance, releasing sugar, um, it, as you said, it feels very lonely. And your book yes. gives you an opportunity for people to see, gee, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. These people have been through some of the very same things, and they made it through. And I was wondering, because uh, one of the things that you talked about was uh, some of the emotional feelings that you begin to feel um, as you are releasing sugar. Um, what's one tool that uh, someone can um, use to help calm their sugar cravings as they're going through this sure. process? I have so many. I was like, oh, my God, you're asking me to name one? I must have like a hundred or who knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. I, and I, I try to give, you know, different ones to different interviews. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so um, one of my favorite new tools doesn't really require much from you other than the fact that you need to buy my book, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Beyond Sugar Shock, and then you go to my website, beyondsugarshock.com, and then you sign up for my list because what's going to happen um, is you're going to get what's called a mind movie. So the tip is this. You want to feel as if you've already conquered your sugar habit. You want to feel, uh, you know, you want to get into the feelings of what it's going to be like. You know, you're excited and life is wonderful and you've got all these, you know, fun things that you're doing in your life and things that excite you, not just sugar. The excitement that you have for sugar is 
you know, you don't have it anymore because you're excited about other things instead. And so what uh, my assistant and I have been doing, doing, we spent lots of time on this, is to prepare. It's, it's actually this company, and it's, it's what's called a mind movie. And so we prepared Ooh. a three-minute mind movie. And in it, you have music, and you have images, and you have, um, you know, it, it's designed to kind of trigger your emotions. And all you do is you watch it, literally, for three minutes in the morning and three minutes in the evening. And so then the tip then, it's not just to watch the mind movie, but it's to get into the feeling that you are already free. We talked about freedom earlier. You are mm-hmm. free and what that would mm. feel like. You're not going to focus at all. I mean, I've had so many clients who are like, oh, I'm going to miss my chocolate cookie, ship cookies. No, no, no. You want to focus on what's it going to feel like. You know, what's it going to be like when you're over your sugar habit? That is what can help you. You want to focus mm. on those benefits, not on how, oh, my God, you're going to miss certain sweets. And so to help you along on that, because I knew, you know, it would obviously people order a book. It's going to take a while for the book to come, but boom, you order. You know, you go to my website beyondsugarshock.com and you and you buy you buy the, you buy the book, and then boom, you immediately get a copy of this mind movie, and you can just start watching it every day, and it'll get you in that frame of mind. So it's really really cool. You can do it without That's the mind fantastic. movie, but I just we've we've worked very hard to, you know, to come up with something that would help you very easily. That's a great aid. I understand the um, the value of visualization and positive affirmation. So right. that makes a lot of sense. I have a question to ask you, though, because you said something about chocolate, and I'm, and I'm wondering if the listeners, if this came to their mind, where does bittersweet chocolate fall or dark chocolate fall in this whole scheme of things? Does this mean that people who are thinking that they, if they eat dark chocolate, they're being health, uh, heart healthy, but they can't eat dark chocolate anymore? Um, you know what? Um, I think dark chocolate is a really, really valuable tool. Um, preferably, the less sugar, the better. But it's mm-hmm. a really valuable tool as you're phasing out sugar. Um, in fact, I, I got, I actually, <laughs> I, I eat the hundred percent dark chocolate, literally, like hundred mm-hmm. percent, meaning mm-hmm. no sugar. But you can find ninety-two percent. You can find eighty-two percent, and it's a really useful tool as you're facing out the sugar. And yes, there are all these benefits that you read about with chocolate. I also eat like cacao beans, so the the you know the the benefits are tremendous from cacao. You hear about it quite a bit. So I'm a big fan of of dark chocolate. Absolutely. Um, oh, good. Okay. I'm glad I asked that question. Good. Yeah. good. No, I'm a big big fan of dark chocolate. So less sugar, the better. But when okay, you're facing so out the sugar, folks out the there, best ways to do it. For the alcoholics out there who have switched to dark chocolate because you hear how uh, healthy it is, maybe you can still continue it, but all things in moderation. Uh, you don't want to, like, go into overkill. And as Connie just said, 100% uh, dark chocolate has no sugar in it. That would be the way to go. Now, Connie, the thing about 100% is I want people to mm-hmm. know 100% is, like, no sugar. It may be a little much for people. So you may want to have, for instance, some goji berries at the same time or or maybe – uh, some for some people can't even handle goji berries. You know, some uh, you know, even like a slice of. Oh, I know what I've done. I put like cacao beans, um, on an apple, so you could have an apple at the same time and a little bit of protein because you want to soften the blow. I mean, for some people, a hundred percent dark chocolate is pretty intense. For me, I like it, and I have it mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. every. I have cacao beans every morning in a shake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I, so I know that you brought up fruit, so I wanted to. I read about it in the book, but I think it would be great to share very quickly uh, where fruit falls in this whole thing uh, when it comes to releasing sugar. Does that mean we release release the fruit too? No, I'm. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think that when you're letting go of your sugar habit, I think fruit can be absolutely one of the most helpful things. You know, it's just. I mean, I know. There are experts who say, okay, get rid of the fruit too. And I'm realistic, for goodness sake. I know you still want to have something sweet. So I think fruit can really be an incredible ally as you're phasing out sugar. Now, over time, you may want to have less fruit. You want to stay away from the fruits that are really, really high high glycemic. 
um, mm-hmm. like I, as I mentioned, <laughs> the dried mango, you may want to just flat out stay away from um, dried fruits in general. And dried fruits can mm-hmm. be a trigger. They are high in sugar. So you want to be uh, careful. Um, uh, watermelon, I believe, is very high glycemic, um, but but there's certain there are certain foods that that um, that uh, are not. You know, you're just giving me an idea that I should uh, post an article on my Huffington Post blog or something about fruits and how fruits can be your ally. Oh, great! Quit sugar. Uh, wow, everybody! Yeah, we well, just gave you an idea. Gave a couple of ideas for um, for articles and things to do. So great! <laughs> now, if people that's great. Now, if people want to get your book, read your blog. Sign up for your newsletter. Sign up for your course. How do they do all of that? I think the best bet is to go to my. Well, uh, it's um, it's pretty new. <laughs> my new website, BeyondSugarShock.com, um, and I also have my blog. Whenever there's anything new, this blog. I was one of the first bloggers out there, at least on TypePad. Well, enough was mm-hmm. the first, but I've had my blog since. 2005. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, yeah, I would sugar, say that's one of the first, yeah. Sugar Shock Blog. So it's S-U-G-A-R-S-H-O-C-K, not A. S-H-O-C-K, mm-hmm. Blog, B-L-O-G, as in great. So SugarShockBlog.com, I list all kinds of stuff. But again, to get your free gift, the Mind Movie, just go to, uh, well, you can you just go to beyondsugarshock.com. Actually, you, could probably, you can get it at the blog, too. Um, yes, in fact, I've been to um, all of your sites, and they all kind of interconnect. If people go to beyondsugar.com, they'll be able to get Beyond Sugar Shock. For the beyond course. Sugar Shock. Beyond Sugar Shock. I'm sorry. Beyondsugarshock.com. Yeah. And, uh, again, that's beyondsugarshock, C-H-O-C-K, correct? Yes. Uh-huh. Now, I also wanted okay. to point out that since you're one of like the first interviews that I've done, um, <laughs> very exciting. Um, that I have, um, and and you know, you're like a friend of a friend, and we both went to IIN for those. Yes. Who know what IIN is IIN is Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and so I have a special place in my heart for them. In fact, Joshua Rosenthal who is founder and director of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, wrote the foreword to my book. So anyhow, since since I'm on a call with an, an IIN colleague, and I you know, feel very warmly about that, Linus, um, I'm, I have an offer just for uh, your, uh, your fans, your listeners. Fantastic. So I, as, I, as you and I talked about ahead of time, you know that I'll send you information, then you can send it to your people. Fantastic. So, Wellness Journey listeners, be looking forward to that, and I'll be sharing more information uh, with you about a special offer that we will be offering in conjunction with the release of uh, Connie Bennett's new book, uh, Beyond Sugar Shock. And it is a fantastic book. I really did read it in one night. I, I'm a speed reader, but I mean, I took some time and took some notes because I'm going to be sharing this with my daughter who definitely is the epitome of a sugar addict. And she doesn't mind if I mention it. I'm not saying her name. I've got four daughters, so it could be any one of them. But those who know my family know who I'm talking about. This book is for her. I know she'll do great on this because she's looking for an out. She is looking for an out. In fact, the pictures of the cupcakes on your book, that is my daughter's favorite snack. Favorite sugar addiction right there. She oh, bummer. Well, listen, I got, like I got that. an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> So one reader wrote to me on Facebook, and I invite people to join me on Facebook. Um, just look for Connie Bennett, and I'm in a blue shirt. Um, I have several Facebook pages. Anyhow, she writes to me, Connie, why are there cupcakes on the cover of your book? Isn't that like <laughs> antithetical to your message? And I'm like, oh, shoot. And she goes, I covered the cupcakes. <laughs> and so I wrote, I wrote to her. I said, please send me a photo of what you did, how you covered the cupcakes. So you go to my Sugar Shock blog, and there's a photo. I swear she has covered the cupcakes on the cover of the book. And the whole goal, then, <laughs> is that when she feels strong enough around sugar, she can take off what she, how she's covered the book. I thought I was very impressed by what she did, but anyhow. <laughs> that is great. When my daughter sees this book, she'll want to open it immediately because okay, of the so, cupcakes that are on well, there. You, know, you can always <laughs> cover the cupcakes. 
<laughs> she's gonna. She's probably thinking, okay, how can I get rid of sugar and still be able to eat these cupcakes? Let me find out. <laughs> Connie, thank uh, you, know, you so much for being on the I'm working on a cupcake recipe, a sugar-free cupcake. You're working on one? Well, cupcakes are very popular these days, so I'll be interested that's, in finding out about the non that's, that's why we put them. That's why we put them on the cover. They're yeah, really they're very, very cupcakes popular. Cupcakes on the cover. It, it really, it's it's just reflecting what's out there. Okay, you're mm-hmm. going to be tempted. Absolutely. And this, and this book is intended to arm you with some powerful and simple tools so that you can actually withstand the temptation out there. You're going to be tempted. So, you know, it's just, it's, 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 that's what you're facing. Well, thank you so much for all of the tips and information and sharing your story with us. It's really been a revelation in terms of all the different things that we are facing when we begin to go through this um, um, journey of getting rid of the sugar, but it also has so many benefits, and thank you for sharing all that information. Again, everyone, uh, Connie Bennett's book comes out on June 5th, today. And um, how can they June get your book is again? June first, but the launch is this June 5th. Right? So tell your friends okay. on June 5th to buy my book. <laughs> That's right. When, they, when you get your it broadcast, make sure it'll be to get June your 5th. Free and make sure to get your free gift at my website. Okay, fantastic. Mind. Connie Bennett, and once again, author of Beyond Sugar Shocks. The six-week plan to break free of your sugar addiction and get slimmer, sexier, and sweeter. Thanks so much, Connie, for joining us on The Wellness Journey. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, okay, everybody. Now we have another challenge that I really want everybody to get this book. I got it yesterday, and it's very entertaining. It's well-written, and it's easy to understand, and it will motivate you to begin to make those lifestyle changes that we talk about. And sometimes it takes tiny steps, but just as long as you're making steps towards total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit, then you are beginning to take control of your life and on your way to a better and more satisfying and fulfilling and joyful and healthy life. Thanks again for joining us on The Wellness Journey. This is Linus of PraiseWorks, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining us on The Wellness Journey. We hope that you have enjoyed our show and look forward to the opportunity to share with you again information that will help you along your journey to total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit.